and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3. I've successfully conquered Russia as of the last videos and I've moved all my armies back to Europe and um, I'm not entirely sure how many turns I did but I did quite a few. It took a while to get all the armies back and I rearranged them as well so we can go ahead and take a closer look at that. I've stationed a lot here in Bavaria. So we've got the Polish army. Nothing's changed there. I don't think I've changed anything with the, most of these, but um, I've gone ahead and given them all eight pound guns, which I uh, deployed from, uh, or I got from Marseille. Uh, also, we've got the Lancers that I was able to recruit. We've spread them among a few of the armies as well. Um, I changed around some stuff in Belgium. I built an ordnance board instead of a museum which allowed me to recruit Belgian cannons so they have their own special Belgian cannons now. Uh, we moved in L uh, Lan got another L light cavalry unit. It's the first uh, regiment of Chasseur et Cheval. She only can have one. I think they died somewhere in campaigning something, but I have raised them up again. Then we got here we got the Belgians. So they've got now special Belgian cannons. Back here, as we can see, I've annexed the um, the Westphalians, and I'm sort of putting together a German army. So we've got uh, well, this cannon might be sent away because it's not. German, but we're recruiting some German cannons and some more German troops from um, the Duchy of uh, Berrien. And uh, we got the two Bardischen. Uh, only could find one w Wautenberg. I think the Wautenberg Grenadiers were destroyed, if I'm not mistaken. So um, we'll have to recruit them later on. And then we got the v uh, the Viennese uh, Freiwillige Battalion. Apparently, you can have three of these but I can't recruit any. Also, yes, I think I had a question about someone wanting me to recruit Hungarian troops. I cannot recruit Hungarian troops. They're probably a while ago, so... Probably forgot about that question. Napoleon's army has changed around a bit. I've moved away everyone who isn't the guards. We've got three, four units, I mean, four units of young guard, four units of middle guard, four, uni four units of old guard, two units of young guard chasseur, Two of them. Uh, we've got the a the uh, 12 pounder battery with uh, 10 cannons in it. I think it is. Um, you probably can see. Yes, 10 guns. Probably gonna move out the uh, this and then and replace it with something else. Not entirely sure. And then cavalry is all the same. We got Marshal Ney up here. He's uh, I transfer the cavalry over to him, so he's got the. Um, that one special 6th uh, regiment of Lancers, which you only can have one of, and then he's got the, a big uh, unit of Carasiers, and he also got two uh, uh, Young Guard units. And I think I transfer some veterans, or maybe it's just the fact that he's got a. L no, he's got just these two light infantry units. Possibly three. No, the 32nd is not light unit. Anyways, he's moving over here. Um, Audrino has got all the Corsican units and is moving here because an English navy has set out. Because I'm not entirely sure what triggered them, but I think it was the fact that the Dutch, I managed to get the Dutch to declare war on Britain. I got a lot of nations to declare war on Britain again because a lot of them had stopped. And so he came here and raided Chatham and that caused the Brits to all move down. Also, they, for a while, was actually at peace with the Irish as well, so I had to redeclare war there. And let's see, what else did we do? Yes, I moved the armies around. So this one is going, trying to intercept where these guys are landing. I'm also sending a navy after them. Ney is going after the Mecklenburgers, but I haven't declared war yet. And at this point I'm hoping to uh, take all of them except Bavaria because we're going to take Bavaria last. 
And yes, uh, the Portuguese once again opened trade with the English. I got sick and tired of them, so I decided that, you know what, Spain is actually going to have to do something for once. And so I declared war on Portugal and I dragged Spain into it. Um, the only thing really negative that has happened that you haven't seen was when I decided to attack uh, the Westphalians again and uh, incorporate them back into my territory was that I forgot to break some treaties with them like the um, the uh, the military um, permission to march my armies through that land and trade agreement which caused a relationship drop with all my allies of 4 to 9 points so I had to uh, spend quite a lot of cash here and there to try to get them back at sort of a good a better level a few of them fell to the point where they were um, were indifferent so I had to raise that up again and we can now see the only one who didn't care about the fact that I broke the treaties was Ireland and the Italians, they didn't care about me breaking the um, the uh, treaty. I'm not entirely sure why they were why they sort of didn't care about that. But uh, yeah, and then we had a question about um, yes, someone thought that I should play the campaign more historically or keep the borders. More historically, as I understand it, and that seems very limiting to to sort of keep them at the the level of which they would have been historically, especially since it uh, this one has increased, so it's got 24 turns per year, and the uh, my enemies wouldn't really play by that those rules. But I haven't been that far off in terms of what. France controlled historically. Uh, I think there would be a l maybe a few more. Um, um, what's it called? Uh, a few more protectorate states here and there. I w it wouldn't, of course, go down into Greece and all around there. Um, that wouldn't be historical, and some other here, and then just the spread out invasion of Russia would. Probably would have just sticked around here, gone for Moscow. Obviously not taking Finland, um, a few stuff like that. Not being able to do a successful invasion of Ireland is another thing. And a few of these, but I think that would be quite limiting. So what I, what I could think of is that if the next campaign has a more, has a more because th this one's fo very focused on the Napoleonic Wars, so it's kind of fixed in its scenario. But say, if I was playing Empire or some of the other Total Wars, that has more of an open, broad sco uh, scope where you don't have to, you don't, you're not sort of tied down the same way by historical uh, consequences. I think I could sort of role play a bit more uh, to the extent that I that I could do that, though. Uh, and role play a bit more and that way maybe add some more historical uh, context but I think um, just keeping the borders for keeping the borders sort of on the historical would limit uh, my capabilities and it, in the same way um, I uh, took this example of say I would have started as playing Sweden someone I think actually commented as I thought that I should play Sweden uh, but if I had played as Sweden I would have played, um, you know, I would have just be sitting in Stockholm more or less. For uh, I would still be sitting there since the start, and we would have waited for quite a few years. Then we would have lost Finland to uh, Russia, and uh, I mean Sweden. Sweden was part in marching on Paris a few times uh, with their army, but. We were never really engaged in any great battle, so playing Sweden out of you know using those now that maybe that's an I extreme because Sweden didn't do a lot at, at, at this time period, but uh, you sort of uh, you understand sort of where I'm going with this, and that we're this is sort of more of a what if scenario. What if Napoleon was successful in invading 
Russia and so on. Uh, but I think enough talk now. Uh, it's time to get into action. And getting into action means declaring war on uh, the Hessians. Which is allied with the Sa with Saxony. I broke their alliance. First, these three German states were actually at all allied with each other. So I had to make sure to break that alliance. So we're going to declare war on William the First. He's got moderate power, but he's destitute in terms of, of wealth. I'm going to call all my allies to join. And... Uh, the Hessians was actually joined by Saxony. So uh, the Saxons are at war as well with us. But I've got my armies already there to advance and attack them. Right, so it's about attacking this army first and then attacking here. So I'm splitting this up into two. I don't really need it to. I could have easily... I think I have... Wait, do I have don't I have an army that can march march all the way? Um it seems not, but maybe if I'll attack with just one, it will drag in the other one because Yes, it will drag in the other one, so that's good. Right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and add save just in case. Let's go ahead and fight the first Battle of Frankfurt in 1809. And oh, oh yes, because it's a bridge battle. This time, however, I'm going to have to cross the stream because I'm attacking. Or well, technically not, because uh, the enemy is, or the army that was protecting the bridge would have fallen over to the other side and fall into our side and then the ally their allies would have come up behind us once I've get once again I've managed to forget to turn on all of these so the the, the spot we can cross is probably the easiest one um, to go over but just because of uh, fanzies we will uh, send it a group to uh, secure the bridge as well. But the cannons will be here together with most of the army. What I could do is I could send a lot of the uh, specialist troops. The two grenadier units and two grenadiers the 9th Infantry and the uh, first Chasseur à Cheval and then the rest of the cavalry will come with me to that side the General and the Marines and that's the plan so let's go ahead and start it gonna be wary of where the enemy reinforcements are coming from so they're coming from over here <laughs> gonna go ahead and take a closer look at the Hessian troops we've got a uh, unit over there looks very much like my uh, is a Bavarian no uh, Wittenberg Grenadiers or whatever and what do I have here a cavalry unit similar to the other one right Let's go ahead and cross the stream. What I'm going to do is we're going to set up the artillery on our side of the river because that's going to protect it quite a lot. So we're going to set it up there. But all the infantry is going to cross. And then we can have the guard marines as reserves back here with the general. Two cavalry units will cross the stream as well at some point and uh, let's have most of these cross before we go ahead and have uh, this force move across we're gonna have the light infantry going first And 
here we got the first regiment of uh, Chasseur Cheval. More Hessian troops are turning up. A lot of it is cavalry. Got some Hussars. Completely brown almost. Brown and red pants. Not very nice color combination. Then some of these other troops look better. And the deck actually quite badly textured as well. Compared with other troops, but I guess you wouldn't spend a lot of time texturing such a small nation since there's so many others. Oop, the, <laughs> the FPS fell quite a lot trying to go down and look at all those uh, troops crossing the stream. Let's have the guard marines line up perfectly behind there. And then the line infantry is going to be spread out along here. Could go ahead and take up position in that house. What we we'll do is we'll do we'll start off by doing just a long line, three man deep, which basically covers the entire side of this map, this side of the map. It's going to take a while from them to get there. And while they are getting there, it's time to unlimb the guns. And they're all stationed pretty well. I don't think they're going to hit the trees in front of them. Although some of the cannon crew there chose a very wonky position. They turn the cannon straight into the tree. That's not going to be very useful. And uh, let's speed this up, shall we? So we get our men in order. Let's see. Ah, some of the first cannon shots are flying through. I want to see if there's any more interesting uh, Hessian troops turning up. Some light infantry or something. Because right now it's all line infantry. This one... I'm not sure if it's... What's it? What? Wait, what does it actually say here? Wer. Wer. Wer dich? Wer dich? I imagine that is. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that word is in English, but it basically. Um, weapons duty? We have, the, we have the word in Swedish called. Van uh, Klikti, which is kind of, I guess, you would explain it sort of ish. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you would call it, really. Ver, 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 ver is ver. <laughs> trying to pronounce German. Ver, ver, flichtig, 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 ver, flichtig. Then, plictic. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to run that through Google Translate. They are on flishtish. Flishtish. There's some light infantry coming up. Some skirmishes. Voltage Company. So, uh, you can definitely see a, uh, a French influence because they're actually called Voltage Company. Sir! Sir! Oh! Our general is under attack! Enemy cannon shot went straight through here and took out two men. Okay, we're not going to stand behind the cannons then. And it looks like the cavalry can now march through. Where? Ah, oh, there is their guns. Yeah, we're targeting them back. We're going to target them with both our guns. Now, the enemy general is behind there, but I mean, if the stupid bastard is going to sit there, it's its own fault. Although they more bring in and more um, six pounders. A lot of their troops looks the same, but this one is a Landwehr unit. 
more land there. Quite a lot of this army was land there. So I guess uh, the more colorful units are actually in the capital. We got uh, we do have some guard uh, guard dragoons turning up. The forming line, sort of against the cannons, rather than the line which I'm drawing right here. Let's see where. They have heavy cavalry over here, and they've got hussars moving in here, and they're moving another heavy cavalry. So I guess, looking at this, we're gonna have our carbiniers down here, and then have the hussars up here to match the light cavalry. It's the first light hussars, light ho the first light horse, Hashison Hussar Regiment. Maybe I should start moving these guys up already to try claim that farmhouse and to deal with these hussars, which are charging out on their own. And then we got this area, which is messing up the battle. Plan. We got these guys, these four, could move through the houses and form like so. And then we have a single unit. I guess he will move over here, but he's kind of exposed there on his own. Oh, crap. I forgot to uh, halt. Silly though by the enemy to send in the hussars on their own unsupported. They're not gonna stand, but they they probably are going to uh, take quite a lot of our men with us, with them. And we're probably gonna shoot some our own as well. Uh not gonna take the house because well the enemy is not close enough are they moving men towards the bridge it looks a bit like they are we gotta keep an eye on those hussars because they're not completely broken that it might come back our hussars have open uh, free terrain now so they can quickly move in there they lost about f they lost 54 men have we broken this artillery piece down yet or this is something else. Yeah, they are sending a troop over there. Ish, sort of ish. A landwehr troop is running about close to the bridge. Yeah, the cavalry is back. This time though, we're ready for them. And so we're gonna form square. And they're losing tons of men. And this time they won't return. And we can advance once more. We're advancing up and it looks like we're gonna come to blows with the light company. I want to drag these guys out a bit more. Make the lines longer to uh, Facilitate us actually shooting down these troops uh, coming up. Got another Hussar regiment coming on. Coming a bit too close for comfort, so we're gonna form square and we're gonna have the heavy cavalry counter charge. Counter charge, men! Storm the enemy. We accidentally charged on a few of our own men, but nothing major, it seems. 
Let's see how it's going up here. It's fine. But our heavy cavalry is successfully sending away the hussars. Could continue to get these guys, but they are a bit too far away. Let's just make sure that the hussars do not come back. They're gone. Let's draw back the heavy cavalry. And then get the main line to advance. As such. The Hussars have arrived. They can move up there. The enemy Hussars are coming back. Let's see if we can run into position quickly and I think we will be just Standing in line, we should be able to uh, break them without having to uh, resort to. Um, oh crap, we're gonna have to uh, set up there instead. And then these coming like that. You know what? This one is gonna stand there on its own. And then these three are gonna come from there instead. And the Hussars are going to move all the way up there. So these firing through the house. Not a lot is going to fire through there. But this one's going to get a lot better fire going. Enemy cavalry coming in. Supported by infantry. Landwehr. Going to have to form a square here. And these guys going to fall back to there. And open fire from there. And the Hussars need to hurry into their position, so we can flank the enemy. The main line seems to be holding fine. And while this is happening, we're going to move across the guys we have across the bridge. Get them across to deal with the Hessians. The square is holding. The enemy is attacking it pretty hard though. But I have my men now coming up well in their flank in being able to push down fire on the side here. Across the main line we're holding just fine. And the square repel the enemy and they can fall back, form into line and open up on the enemy. Let's make sure that these guys do not come back. So we'll send in the Hussars. Get them to charge in there among the uh, retreating Hessians. We've got a lot of troops coming in here, so if these guys could hope, uh, hurry up and open fire there, that would be nice. And these guys need to gain ground upon the enemy. Yeah, they're keeping these guys on the run got close fights up here where the Hessians and our men are basically standing on top of each other but the Hessians are soon to fall apart I imagine let's see our light infantry has crossed And they will form into skirmish line. And they will hurry that way. The Hussars are done with their job over there. Let's see if we maybe can... That's a guard regiment though. Let's see if we can get the Hussars. Maybe to get those guys. Oh, the cavalry is going to take... I thought they these guys were going to cross first. But they are slightly uh, stupid. So that's not going to happen. Set up in the forest. And fire from over there. We push them back from their attack on the village. See if we can get this these unit through through the house there. And this one to advance. A lot of this can probably move just because there's only one unit holding them. So this one 
will move like so, and the heavy cavalry will come through. I think our cannons are not really being going to be useful right now. These guys are about to break. Where did I put my hussars? Hussars, get them now. Good fire is being put down on this flank right here. Tons of men are falling. The enemy general has fallen. And so we can imagine the rest of their army falling pretty quickly. Let's get the Hussars. Now get the Voltageers first. So we can imagine the rest of the enemy army is going to fall pretty soon. Get these guys quickly over here. Hussars are going through there. The heavy cavalry needs to speed up a bit. The enemy has formed a square there to do some kind of a rear action to protect the rest of the fleeing army. Another enemy general was killed. The two cavalry units, what the heavy cavalry unit can probably break that uh, square on its own. Let's see. Yes. The Chasseur Cheval are through and they're going to be able to charge over here. The heavy cavalry going in, harassing the square. Seems like they're going to hold, it, though, I say, as they, uh, them are all turns red. They're one of the last few units that are standing against us. And so we can imagine that they're probably not going to be standing for very long. You know what? God, the Chasseur will get these ones instead because this one is about to break. Especially since the Grenadiers are going to come up in their rear and shoot at them. Heavy Cavalry broke the square. These guys break. And this unit is about to fall as well. Grenadiers will hold the fire from where they are, and I think these guys will break. And there we go. Our first battle against the Hessians have proven successful, and Lan has defeated them. Now let's go back to the campaign map, see the actual statistics of the battle, and then progress to attack their capital with Napoleon's army. We lost 768 men, the enemy lost 3,000 men. Highest killers was the Hussars, followed by a veteran Fusilier unit. And the enemy was defeated. Some remain there though. I could go ahead and attack them. But um, kind of pointless. There's basically nothing left. And so what we'll do instead is we'll have Napoleon cannot actually reach. Huh. Then I'll have to end turn. And we don't want them to turn back up again. So we'll push these two armies in and make sure ah, we cannot actually reach that means they're gonna be able to draw these guys back into the capital and support that well then we have to do some other attack because then we'll have to start I was gonna split this up into two so we'd had one video where I did the um, the attack on Saxony and one where I did the attack on uh, Audrey no or the Polish army we're gonna I think are they they might be able to call support from over there so Audrey no will support the Polish army that will attack Kaspar 
Speckenbach. Which retreats across. And we're going to have to fight them. He secures the bridge. Everyone will now turn towards there. I was hoping that he was going to stand and fight, but he wasn't. Huh. Um, right. Then my attack did not go as planned. But uh, I could have prepared it better, but I wanted to go ahead and start recording again before England landed his army or whatever they, wherever they did. So let's go ahead and end the turn. Oh, England! England lands its army in Denmark. So we have... Wait, 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 wait. When did Eng England actually did historically invade uh, Denmark? Because there was... There was... Uh, they were afraid that Napoleon was going to invade Denmark and take their fleet. And so... There was a naval battle against the Danish, where the the the, uh, the English they didn't well the Danish fought well, but then the Danish navy sort of went off, um, and so the English I guess were more convinced, even more convinced, that they had to take the navy from the Danish, and so what they did was they landed an army and they started to siege the capital of Copenhagen and they this was the f I one of the first times they used terror bombing you could argue that probably you know back in the day earlier when they well that may be more of chemical warfare when they threw dead bodies and catapults over the walls but um, they used the rockets to set fire to a large amount of buildings in Copenhagen and then force the civilian population to pressure the well the ci civilian population then pressure the army to surrender and that's what they did and so the English were able to uh, take Copenhagen and take the navy the thing they found though was they the navy was not as good as they thought and the English had to st I think they stayed for almost a year just to repair and make the, n the Danish Navy seaworthy again to actually take it take you know get away with it take it away so they almost spent their um, yeah and then of course by doing this they sort of forced Denmark's hand to be s to side with Napoleon and then later on that allowed Sweden to uh, to attack uh, Denmark and take Norway from them or it was sort of given to us in in the end for being having been part of all the uh, the alliances throughout this uh, let's see what happened there why did it anyways they want to pay me 29,000 which is quite a lot given that they are meager wealth for a peace treaty. But no, I'm not going to go ahead and accept that. The Swedish Navy turn up and they cornered the Danish Navy and sunk it. So the war ag with Denmark is actually heating up. Denmark has had so much time to deal with... No, wait. wait no, why did I do that? No, why? Oh, I wasn't supposed to accept that. I was just about... God, this is interesting because now England is going to take over Denmark. And that's, you know, I had a plan actually before this uh, to buy Norway off of Denmark just because I have so much money. Why did I si do a peace treaty with Hesse? I'll, the thing is I can just declare war on them again, but that was stupid. Let's see, the Spanish, uh, the Spanish, the Spanish are moving their troops around. Hopefully they'll be able to defeat Portugal pretty soon, so I, so that Portugal don't stop trading with uh, England. Blocked path, blocked path, tactical retreat, tactical retreat, tactical retreat, tactical retreat. 
P3 designed with Hessian. No, that's stupid. Uh, more German troops. So we've got um, four infantry units of Bergen. Um, these have quite high morale, actually. 45. It's unusually high compared with... Oh, these guys are 50, so it's, uh, yeah, it's actually a bit lower. Württemberg Grenadiers. And Bandish and Grenadiers. And then we're gonna get a 9 pound gun. And then two uh, cavalry units. But yeah, we need to uh, get back in war with these guys. Um, can I, wait, can I not, what I can do is, there's probably a lot of others, that, wait. I almost looked as Spain was un, unhappy with me. What I can do, joining wars, I will join Hessian if they declare, let's see if they go. And so the business of one has concluded. So I didn't directly declare war on them, I sort of joined them that way. Anyways, we're gonna have to build up then for a quite a big battle. Not sure if the Polish army would then be up to be the main the main attack force in this. And this is interesting because now Denmark is gonna be attacked. We can sink the Swedish Navy. It seems that they are bow strand. But maybe I want to play that one. I'm not sure. Rather than fighting the huge English navy. But Ney then is going to have to march over and try to save the Danish. Or I could be a bit tactical and let the English actually take Copenhagen. And then when I release Copenhagen, oh, it's Arthur Wesley even. Um, and then when I release, then this army does not actually need to march that way, but it can march to this supply depot. And it can come within reach of supporting our attack on this. They have a huge fort there though. So I really don't want to fight the fort. What I want to do is I want to uh, fight in a land battle so I want to attack this one and drag this army out of the fort and in that way destroying it. Now I'm not sure how much time I have left in this video. Um, Lan will go ahead and finish this. Ah, we just pushed them back to uh, capital. Great stuff. But at least the guys are in. We're back in. Napoleon will go ahead and attack this. Maybe I can push them even further and then drag this one out so I don't have to attack the stupid fort. I uh, don't like the fort battles. They are too messy. And they're not, they don't make for uh, good videos, I think. But this, I, li I like this part. This sort of random invasion by the English on Denmark. Maybe this is some kind of script as part of the mod that they do follow some kind of historical line. But this is really interesting. Um, anyways, just to be safe, I think I'll I'll end this video right here, and then if it turns out that this one is rather short, I can go ahead and increase the next one, and so I can do both battle the this one against the Hessians and the ones against the uh, against Saxony. I think we'll start off with the one against Saxony because we can draw them into a field battle and so I can spend most of my energy in the new video on that and then do this one afterwards. Sounds like a plan. And then at some point we'll take Oldensburg as well just to incorporate that and Mecklenburg. Um, anyways... I hope you guys enjoy this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!